Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular scheduled council meeting for June 17th, 2019 at 7 p.m. Mayor Lowry. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Shady. Here. Good. Mrs. McKenzie. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Thank you, ma'am. Stand we'll tonight's location by Councilman Vice Mayor Lindsay. Your heads, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you once again to do this business to the city, Father. We ask you to give us all wisdom and patience with each and every one of us. Father, we ask you to bless our fire service and our police department. Keep them in your hands. Let no harm come to them as they go about and do their duties, Lord. Father, we pray for the tornado victims uh, in our area. The devastation is tremendous, as you know. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Actions on the council meeting for 6319. Motion to waive 7. Minute 19. Second. It was, I think it was first here. Oh, it was first. It was, okay, I didn't hear him at all. Okay. It was right on. Okay, Shammy, and who was the second then? Okay. Mr. Cobb. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Minutes accepted six zero. Thank you. We're on communications on tonight. Number seven, city manager's report. Mr. Fish. Thank you, Mayor Lowry. Uh, members of the public, I'd like to share with you the city manager report. And we'll start off with our finance report with our finance director, Ms. Watson. Good evening, council and residents. Our May financial report uh, shows our total revenue for Excuse May. Me, Mrs. Watson, Ms. Watson, can you speak up? We can't hear you over the, I'll try. Over the AC <laughs> up here. Yep. This is our May Council Financial Report. Our May total revenue is $783,680.76, and our total expenses is $873,182.08. Year to date, though, our total revenue is $2,699,154.85, and our expenses are $2,455,183.58. Questions. Council, any questions? Thank you for the report. Uh, sorry, Mr. It took me a minute to get there. Vice Mayor Lindsay. I was looking at the uh, pool report. Mm -hmm. Is that because of the renovations, the deficit that we did? Yeah, well, I showed it in that wet form, Matt, so you can tell that when, we, when the pool starts paying for itself. I didn't include, if, if you look at the revenue and then I said the expenses, but if you look at the deficit, it's only, it doesn't include the transfer. So we can watch all season to see how the pool's doing on its own. I, that's why I did it that way. So you could at least see how it's doing on its own. So we can see if it's really holding its own without a transfer. Okay. So, so the that's the only reason why I did it that way. The transfer was to uh, renovate the restrooms, do yes. some lighting and yes. things like that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole ain't started yet. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And moving on with the city manager report with our service director, Mr. Howard Kitker. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Under service departments, uh, we will be completing minor road repairs in areas that need more in-depth repair, and such as ruts created from the trash operations. Uh, we will be getting to those soon. We are mowing the heck out of grass uh, with all the rain, so we will uh, get to those soon. Water main break asphalt repairs. We have completed seven at this time. We still have five additional main breaks that we need to dig up and repair. Um, so it's just been nonstop for the water department since we've been working on the pool. Uh, they've been busy out in the field. Uh, as we were just talking about pool upgrades, they're complete. They included the new underwater pool lights, new overhead lights, 
locker room upgrade, uh, upgrades such as toilets, urinals, sinks, dividers. We are still, wor still working on some uh, minor things we're adding to changing rooms and uh, the changing areas, curtains, that type of thing. Floor resurfacing and um, of course we had new partitions. 2018, 2019 various road projects, the Gilwood Drive reconstruction project which is the 300 block only. Uh, that will be starting June 24th and that is uh, estimated to be about 80 days. It was the bid uh, low or the award went to TC Holzen um, Construction Company for in the amount of $334,639.50. The new Carlisle Street levy share is approximately $40,000 for that project. The rest is a federal community block development grant that we received. Um, critical infrastructure um, and those are federal dollars coming back. Street resurfacing project of Hemlock, Butternut and Bittersweet. Those have been resurfaced. Uh, the paving is complete. Um, I know it said complete by 614, but we did get it done um, after I had uh, sent the report off to Mr. Bridge. Uh, we do have one manhole to adjust and we will be done with those. And then I'll start working on um, next year's project. 2019 wastewater plant influent building upgrade. Uh, new pump is fully operational. We are not using it um, really at all unless it is an absolute emergency because we do not have the bar screen in in the current project. So, um, but it is ready. If our pump that we do have in there that's run on its last leg does falter, uh, we just do not want to send any kind of debris in a brand new pump. Uh, the ordinance is in front of you tonight for approval to approve Peterson Construction um, to start this pro the rest of this project. And with the traffic signal upgrade project, tracings have been sent to ODOT. Uh, we are going out for bid this summer. I think it is a September award. And then um, after submittals, we're hoping that this winter they order the polls and it'll be a, probably more like a summer project. But the goal is, and everyone knows at ODOT, that these two intersections will be complete prior to the um, Heritage of Flight Festival. So um, that is all I have on the report. I could entertain any questions on the report or anything else that you guys have seen out in the system. Council, any questions, comments? I have one for him. Yeah. You mind? I'm, I'm all right with it. Yeah. On Scott Street, I don't know if that was a gas thing or a water thing that had the metal for a long time uh, that is official. They are working on behalf of Vectran. They are installing a new main from Main Street up to that area. So that is all Vectran's um, issue. If, and if there is an issue with their asphalt temporary sinking in the meantime, I can give their restoration crew a call and they'll usually keep topping it off. But yeah, that is Vectran performing that. Work. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. You're welcome. And moving on, uh, thank you, Mr. Kitko. Moving on with the city manager report, our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trustee. Mayor, Council, and citizens, for the month of May, New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 71 EMS calls in the city, nine in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to three fire related calls in the city and two in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered either by Pike or, or Bethel Clark due to 52, Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual aid for Pike Township and one mutual aid for Clark, uh, Bethel Clark. In the month of May, the divisions responded to two overdose, overdose calls. In this month, we received our report back for our ISO inspection. ISO, what that does, it determines the uh, insurance companies use this to determine premium costs for homeowners insurance and <coughs> business owner insurance for, for uh, structure and buildings. Um, it encompasses all of the firefighting capabilities for the division to include water supply, equipment training, a uh, number of personnel, dispatching, that type of thing. Um, for us, our rating was a four, uh, and this rated from one to nine. The lower you are, the better you are. Uh, kind of works in reverse. We were a, a rated at a four. We are now rated as a, at a three due to the um, one water department and their diligence of uh, getting more hydrants put into the city, that type of thing, and also two of our upgrade of our dispatch and upgrade of our training uh, schedules and being able to approve training hours uh, puts us at a, uh, like I said, a rated three. To put that into a little bit of a perspective, 
there are less than 4,000 departments in the United States that are level threes, and we are one. So that's a pretty good shot for us. Other than that, any questions? Mr. Scott. Chief Trustee, I want to thank you and your department personnel for getting the lower, or working to have the lower uh, ISO rating. Your department's doing fine. I have no complaints. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a combined effort, not just with the division. It's also Mr. Kitko and his personnel with the Water Department and also uh, the city as a whole, plus also to um, us going to the county for dispatching services. That helped also because that dispatch center is rated. They're a rated dispatch center. The uh, city of Springfield is not. And so all those things come into play. Council, any questions? Other questions? Chief, just real quick, on at the firehouse, you've got what, three, is it broken down to three shifts, two? Excuse me? How's the shifts broken down? It's shifts are broken down from zero six in the morning till noon, noon to six, six to midnight, midnight to uh, six A, uh, six hour blocks. That doesn't mean a person only works that six hours. They may work a 12 hour, they may work a 18 hour or, or whatever their schedule. Our personnel put in their availability four, uh, four weeks prior to the schedule being awarded and then their uh, shifts are given to them according to what their availability that they turned in okay is uh i mean it probably varies but is it say daytime busier than the nighttime or does it just jump around depends on the day of the week depends on the time of the day it, it could be uh the past two months today we only ran one call so far today the past two mondays uh two weeks ago we ran 11 calls on monday and next monday we ran nine calls so all over it's it doesn't there's no way to just say that just historically, in the city, the, high, the highest r uh, run volume month is February for the past three years. Really? Interesting. Right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chief Trustee. And moving on to the city manager report, our police report with Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and the citizens. In May, the new parole deputies were dispatched to 60 calls. Assaults, we had one. Domestic violence, five. Theft, there was six. Non-injury crash, two. Injury crash, one. Citations, 13. Drug complaint, three. Overdose, two. Suicide attempted, two. <coughs> and burglary, one. And this next part saddens me. Our new parole deputies have been on several domestic violence calls where the outcome has been the worst. One of the DV calls, there were two staff, and one of those turned into a homicide. The case is still under investigation by the Clark County Sheriff's Office with more charges to be filed. And on another DV, a woman was dragged and assaulted by a family member, um, resulting in an arrest also. And uh, it's not been easy on, on any of the deputies or fire department up here the last month. Deputies are having problems with car break-ins of a different type. And these, these kids, I guess, are calling it car hopping. This is where the subject go from car to car, looking for the unlocked car and something they can grab fast to turn into fast cash. Um, you, you may have something laying in there. CDs aren't a big deal anymore, but if it looks like they can get five, 10, 20 bucks out of it, they're gonna take it. Um, so please lock your car and keep your valuables inside your house. Uh, and you really need to pay attention to that because you could lose them. Uh, even the valuables sitting in the car with uh, the car locked, you, they may even break the window to get in, depending on what they're after. Underage drinking has become a problem with school being out and deputies are making arrests. We've had several underage arrests. We're experiencing more homeless people living in the vacant houses and using illegal drugs. With your help, we can put a stop to this. You can report a crime and ask to be <coughs> asked to be anonymous <coughs> if you'd like. And then again, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. This could be the phone call we need to solve a crime or save a life. And that really is important. We all have to be involved to put a stop to some of this. 
it gets frustrating for you and us and everyone, but the more tips we have, the better information we have to go on. So with that, that concludes my reports. And if you have any questions. Council, any questions for Sergeant Underwood? Sergeant, it's kind of the same question for you as, uh, and I'm over to think it would be, is this uh, third shift see more activity than day? Or is it random? <coughs> No, it's, it's not the day right now, and it is um, what we may call second shift, 3 o'clock to 1 or 2 o'clock a.m. Okay. Seems to be the most. Now, our domestics have been late morning. We've had some domestics. But no, these are, these are more evening type this time, which normally don't hold. All right. True. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Mr. Bridge. Um, Sergeant Arwood, I do have a, 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 a question for you. When, do, on prior reports, has there been like a miles driven in the city on these reports? How many miles they patrolled, I'm sorry. How many miles they patrolled? Yeah. Is that something we can get on these reports and then maybe break it down by officer? Um, I will try to find that information. I've, we've had a little problem with software. Sure. Um, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll make a note of that and see if they can do that for me. I don't know if it was on this one or maybe the year in report. You usually have the miles patrolled. and something I used to enjoy looking. Okay. But to break that up even more would be even better if you can. I will certainly try. Thank you. All right. Moving on with the city manager report under informational items. Um, new building updates. We will have a special meeting on June 19th. Uh, at 6 p.m. here at the Shelter House. Uh, our architect that we did hire for our design review will be in attendance as well. Um, what we'll be doing is going over the one of the proposed floor plans. There's quite, there's some there's multiple ones out there, but I think we got it streamlined down to this to a point where I want everyone's feedback on it before we go any further with it. Um, with that being said, I will close the city building down at 3 p.m. that day to discuss all those floor plans with our city staff. Um, street guys go off at 3.30, and then the uh, uh, regular office ladies do get off at 4, but we will be closing at 3. Um, so please, if you need to come to the city building on Wednesday, just make sure uh, you're there before 3 p.m. <coughs> uh, Positive Paws Rescue Center will hold a uh, event that's open to the public on Saturday here at Smith Park. Uh, there will also be a 5K run that will be on the bike path for that event as well. And both the park and the bike path will remain open to the public. Upcoming legislation, still working on employee new hire policy, uh, updating our employee handbook. We also have our 2020 tax budget coming up. Uh, we're looking at a first read and the next meeting, uh, council meeting. Um, and then we also have the assessment legislation coming up where we do every August for street assessments, grass cutting, uh, water liens, et cetera. Downtown business walk on 61119, I had a great uh, a meeting with um, a representative from the Western Clark County Business Coalition, as well as um, Springfield Small Business Development Center. We walked around our downtown, looked at open storefronts, got some ideas of how to improve that image downtown. Um, but when you can get the Small Business Development Center involved, um, it's always a good thing. So me and Rhonda Lufford did walk around downtown with two of those reps and had a great meeting, talked to a lot of business owners um, for ways that we can improve our downtown. So more information will be coming on that as well. Waste management sent uh, me a letter and Governor DeWine had given us the tax increase for our gas. Well, from a municipality perspective, it was fantastic because we're getting a, a little bit extra money next year in our 2020 budget to help with road repairs. Well, the flip side of that is the companies who have a lot of cars on the road. One of those companies is our trash collector waste management. So we did get a letter in the mail that they are raising their rates. Um, 10 cents effective 7 1 2019 to 7 1 2020. On 7 1 20, on 7 1 2020, it will then go up to 20 cents and that will last until 7 1 2021. Our current contract with them does expire December 2020. So we'll have to keep this in the back of our mind when we go to decide what we're going to do. Um, but I have a feeling it's going to be across many spectrums. Whoever has a lot of cars on the road, we're probably all going to see uh, small increments in our bills. Um, but I did obviously want to share that with everyone since the bills will slightly go up. That is all I have for my city manager report. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Is this a cumulative? 
Is it 10 cents this year? I'm, I, 10 cents next I, year? I'm pretty sure it's per bill. So for quarter. Do you guys get billed monthly or quarterly? I'm sorry. Quarterly. Council, any questions or comments for the city manager? Mr. Cobb? Mr. Bridge, mm -hmm. I want to bring up here, and I'm going to put it in the form of a motion, <clears throat> the sign for the new city hall. Okay. Rather than have the council member's name on it, I think it ought to have New Cross City Hall purchased by the citizens. Okay. For a motion. Yep. I'll second it. What do you want it to say? It says New Cross City Hall purchased by the citizens instead of having the council's name on it. Okay. <laughs> Can you pass that down, Mr. Cobb? Can you pass that down? Is that a motion on the floor? Yep. What's the exact thing you want on it? What's it? What do you want it exactly to say? Saying, write it down. What I'm to say is the city, city, New Cross City Administration or City Hall purchased by the citizens. Do you want to put any reference to any ordinance? <coughs> do, you, do you want to put a reference there by the ordinance that enacting it? Because usually that stuff is kind of on those things when you dedicate a new building. So you put like by ordinance, whatever it was, bought by the citizens via ordinance XXX. Does uh, council have any comments on this? Maybe it should be something that we talk about a little further. Right, Wednesday. Wednesday maybe we could talk about it a little bit more. That's the first time I've seen it. So. Right, yeah, me too. They, uh, we couldn't talk about this on Wednesday because it's a special meeting held for one purpose. So, gotcha. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lindsay, <clears throat> every building in this city that's been bought by council, I understand the citizens' tax dollars pays for these buildings, the water plant, the sewer plant. Uh, I think that's the only two we have that has plaques on them. Has the council listed on it? So I would not be in favor of that uh, proposal. Mr. Cook? I, I can see where we're going with this thing. But again, the seven people sitting at this table really are doing nothing but passing an ordinance in order to get that building done. The citizens of this city are providing the money in order to do what is necessary to make the administration have a comfortable working area for us to have council chambers. They in turn need, as far as I'm concerned, the congratulations for providing us with this building. Council doesn't need any kind of congratulations, whatever. We are just seven people passing the place. Well, Mr. Um, I would, I, I'm not opposed to, I would like to sit on it before we <coughs> pass it, just so we, we could all think about what type of verbiage we would want on it. I'm not against what, what you're wanting to put on it. I just think maybe we fine tune it before we put it in ink. You know what I mean? I'm going to withdraw the motion. Okay. You got a motion on the floor, you got a vote on it. Okay. What was the bridge? I don't want to interrupt you guys' discussion. Um, if you guys are wanting to change it, can you do a motion to at least change it so I can let the people know who's making it, what's going on, and then pause that because I don't I can't well, let it go too I, long. If you guys, if you know, if you know for sure you're going to change it, let me know. But his, then, motive, his but motive. what you put on it, 
can come later, I guess. Okay, so, his, guys, mo so his motion isn't tied to a certain purpose. Well, I thought it was. Yeah, it is. Yes, it, is. it was. Yeah. What was it again? Um, for the sign to say, <clears throat> New Carlisle City Hall purchased by the citizens by ordinance, whatever the ordinance is. What I'm saying, Mr. Mayor, you don't have to decide what language you want it now. We maybe do that for the next meeting, but I can at least let the people know for sure, hey, council did make a motion. They want to change it. It's official. That's don't go forward with the production. That's what I'm asking. This passes, though, does it lock us into the does exact it lock us into that what he said right and the motion does? It locks us into exactly what he's saying, right? Or it just locks you into changing at some point in time. He can, he can do the motion to say to change it at a later date without dis dictating what you want on it right now. Just the right, because right now it's being made as is. Well, I can only keep the people who's making the sign on hold for so long. So okay. if I have a motion that you guys are going to change it, it could be next meeting, that's fine. I now know for sure okay. that it's going to be changed. So I might have to call that company and be like, hey, I'll let you know what it's going to say at, after the next council meeting, but I do know for sure that it's changing. Does that make sense or am I confusing everyone? Okay. I understand the motion, it was to put the verbiage on it that was the motion okay so are you able to withdraw motions no. you won't withdraw the motion no. do you understand what the new motion would be yep. okay let it ride <coughs> again you don't I'm sorry, Mr. No, sorry. Mr. No, ahead, Mr. again every building that this council council of the city has purchased rebuilt redone whatever has had the council's names on that building or on that plaque along with the ordinance of the council members that was involved in doing that i understand citizens pays for it but the citizens pays for everything we do uh the uh you know, through their tax dollars, property taxes, you know, wherever the money comes from, the water, sewer rates, uh, income tax. Uh, I just. So if we wanted to, to wait until next time, we would vote a certain way on this proposed ordinance and then we would be able to well, the way it is now, if you vote yes on this, it, it, it and, changes. And, and, and right, right. He is, but if we vote no, then we're able to bring up another ordinance proposal correct. to sit on it correct. until next time. That's, Mr. Cobb, that's what I would like to see. And this is just my two cents. Um, I'm not against necessarily what you're wanting to put on it, but I think it would be nice, like the paper you have there, to see what, like, I'm assuming you could get a mock-up of what he wants to see on it. I would like to see it, you know, how it's how it looks on the sign before we say yes, that's what we're going with. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I didn't put the original sign code in front of council. I mean the original all that original signage was me. Because it falls under my spending authority. It does. So there's this is not a contract. The, that's the uh, thing about it. like I'm not signing a contract to get these signs made. It's just here's the thing and it's under my spending authority. Um, but with that being said, I work at the discretion of council. So if there's a motion on council to distract me to do something, I will do it. But I, that's the reason I did not put that in front of you guys to begin with, because it fell well under my spending authority. Correct. You know, so I figured I'd hang that myself. And Mr. Lindsay is saying truth. Anytime that we've got a new weather wastewater plant, there is a plaque that says similar things out there. This is why it was made the way it was. So, yeah. you know. I know, I know that yeah. Tecumseh's got a similar plaque. Yeah. Um, I think all business but I work at discretion of council, so however you guys would like me to proceed is fine. I just need to know so I can get a hold of the correct appropriate people. I'm, I'm fine with changes on it or adjustments. I just don't want to lock it into those set. And that's what it's going to do. Yeah. Call for the vote. Did, did you hear what I was saying, Mr. Kyle? Uh -huh. Did you hear what I said? Uh -huh. I was saying I'm, I'm all for suggested changes and adjustments. I just don't know if I want to lock it into those exact words and then maybe say we get it on the sign and it maybe just doesn't have the right feel or tone to what you're trying to put across. Could we go back and change it again? Well, not all cities have the council members on the plan. You know, 
and the citizen bought the building, not council. Council didn't buy this building. And it's the citizens and the taxpayers that paid for it. They also bought the water plant and the sewer plant. There's box on there with the council members' names that was involved in passing that ordinance. So I don't see why this would be any different than previous councils has done. And I'll keep the rest of that thought to myself. The bottom line is, is the citizen bought the bill. Any other questions, comments on this before we move for a vote? Can you read it one more time just so I have comments? Could I suggest that instead of purchased or paid for by, it was provided by the citizens, and that covers the election of the council, and it provides for the money. Just rather than saying purchased, this was provided by the citizens. In which we are. Uh, is the public yeah, allowed true. to speak now? Not really. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to get it too. too yeah, it, what do you think of the word Mr. provided? Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I uh, call the you, question. What do you think about the word provided? I have, don't have a problem with that. Okay. Mr. Lindsay. I call the question. Sir? Call for the vote. Everyone good? So, scratch the word purchased, provided. He has to amend that, that uh, motion. You want to amend it, Mr. Cobb, to provide? I'll amend the motion that it be changed to provide by. Is there a second? Yes. He wants to see it. Yes, he lists the ordinance. Okay, so we're voting on the amendments to change the verbiage to <coughs> use the word provided. Correct. And the second was by Mr. Cook. So Vice Mayor Lindsay? No. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? No. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Motion passes four to two. Okay, so back to the original one now of um, changing the verbiage on the sign. Uh, Vice Mayor Lindsay? No. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? No. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Motion passes four to two. Thank you, ma'am. And Mr. Bridge, you're finished up with your report, correct? Yes, I was. Any, did anyone have any questions on the waste management stuff before we go on? No. Okay. If, I'm gonna, yeah, I mean, they, they, I'm going to review that contract. Um, I think there is a clause in there for extenuating circumstances. I am going to review that. If anyone has any questions after the fact, please feel free to give me a call or give me an email. They literally just gave that letter to us, I, I think, early last week. It may be dated. No, June 5th, so I've had it for a minute. Anyway, um, yeah, well, any questions, just let me know. But I am going to check the contract, but probably they have every authority to do it. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Mm -hmm. Moving on to comments from members of the public. If you have any questions or comments, please call to close to five minutes and go to the podium, please.
weeds, you know, it come up when we spoke before the meeting, the, the thought was about uh, emergency vehicles coming up the lane, and, and we all know we've had that happen a couple times um, with all the traffic out there, but I think, I don't think Mr. Kitka was at one of the meetings um, as far as can we widen it with the bike path being there, and then I think private property and houses on the other side. Can that lane be widened? Oh, there's room to widen it in that um, sketch that I had gotten. It, we were, without going back and looking, right off the top of my head, I want to say we were in the <coughs> $20,000 range to do just a resurface. Mm -hmm. Then to do the full widening, excavate the soil, excavate everything, we were around 58, I believe. Somewhere high 50s, I think. Mm -hmm. That's right. Council, any questions, comments on this subject? It's something I've thought about too, honestly, um, the widening. I, I agree with you, frankly, that we should widen it, do it right the first time. But I do understand that spending that kind of money uh, is something we don't really want to do right now, as far as all at one time. It's something I thought about maybe we would take, if we waited on our um, renovations that we wanted to do inside the building, maybe we could use some of that money for it. But I understand what you're saying. It's, I think that we need more parking out there also, and widening it would be a lot better. Uh, everyone is parked on the side, as it is right now, on either side. Um, but I don't... Spending $28,000 now, and then having a problem if you're down the road, and having to try to Have you, have you personally, or, or Chief, or even Sarge, have you guys had to do any calls or runs here where that's been a problem? Mm -hmm. Here, we've, we've had to pick up people. If there's parked on both sides of the, of the, of the lane like they are now, I'm not getting a fire engine down that road. I can barely, barely get a medic. That's sometimes. Ba Basically, we wouldn't even bring down the lane. Okay. We'd be stretching hose from the street. Mr. Cook. How much revenue do we bring in on the shelter house rental? I think 12 or 13 a year around there. Don't quote me on that. Run that by me. 12 or 13 a year around there, roughly. Maybe up to 15. You have your budget on you, Debbie? Mm, not, but I do have a revenue report that kind of could give us what we can do for the shelter house. Oh, yeah, yeah. 101, 2000. Yeah. Miscellaneous oh, receipts. Yeah. That's 12. That's it's almost like smart to make one side not parking. No, it's not. Because we're kind of landlocked. What's you know? the property line there? Is that why that's the property line? It's 16. Yeah, I don't know. It's popped out of my head. We have to. That's the property line of the fence. Can we do parking that way? Yeah. He, he might not have his, his fence can be set back from his property line. His property line, more than likely, probably goes to the edge of the road. That's cool. What is it, Debbie? So far this year, we've uh, five thousand eight hundred ninety-three dollars for the shelter house, and we're about so around twelve, thirteen here. Yeah. So when you look at that revenue stream versus what you want to do, I think it's a very good point. But I think that we had discussed that one more landlocked here. To make this parking lot bigger, we would where are we going to go? We can't go that way. We can't go that way because of landlock there. I think some simple striping would help out. Um, we need to find a way to make it almost like a better square, perhaps, um, and then maybe look at just putting parking on one side of the driveway up instead of both sides. When I looked at it for about the 58, it would like I said, it was widening the lane. There was no official striped parking on the lane. There was about nine, I think, nine to ten uh, spots up in this area only. It just never stopped people from parking halfway off for, since 2000, since I've been here. I've seen vehicles on both sides of that lane for the last almost 20 years that I've been here. So what we can derive by what he said, if we widen it, we're losing the parking on the side of the streets anyway. 
Yeah, so we'll get about 11 spots up in here, but that'll be it. Yeah, so we'll it'll go to 11, zero on the lane if we do no parking wide and no parking. Well, there is nothing from looking at us putting a little road back here to park behind as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why I think it's a good point. We'll have to look into it. Maybe we look at, you know, instead of just keep it out front, do we also put parking in the back as well? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm concerned about that because we couldn't have it go around and exit on this side, so we'd have to have a big enough lot back there can allow for ingress and regress in one lot. So, so that's gonna what kind of parking you want? You want 45 degree angle parking? You want 90 degree angle parking? Because people's literally gonna have to enter and exit out of one spot. If that makes sense. So it's a two pull out, pull out, right back. Now you got to turn around and go back out the way you came, but. I think it's definitely worth looking into. I think very, very good outside the box thinking there. Thank you. I will have to go back to the manual and see. I know we haven't had it striped, but I got to look at the radius on it and see if it's technically. Yeah. I'll look in the manual, but you got to abide by it's not oh it's the <laughs> uniform traffic control device manual, and you'll look at uh, I'll have to figure out what the radius is, but I know it, no one parks in the curve, but I believe where he parks is is park right the curve, but yeah, and but I what we feel is probably unsafe because there's no crashes there. So it, let's let's say I get into this and it's legit what he's doing. Um, it would take crashes, near misses, things like that to make me change it to where there would no not be any kind of lawsuit or anything like that to just say I'm going to stripe it for no reason other than to park, have him not park in some place that he's technically would be able to engineer to be able to park. I can look into it. You know, it's not that's not a hard uh, thing to look at. It's the same thing if you're on um, Washington Street heading west and you come to Smith Street. There's that van that sits right there on the uh, south side. He's legally parked, however, it is a tough spot, but I can't go back more than 25 feet and put no parking. Obviously, no crash data would support it, th those type of things. Um, but that's the same instance right there where um, I think it needs to have a little more site clearance, but the stop sign is not your stopping point they reference the tri engineering triangle of your um, site is where you're actually uh, approaching the edge of pavement for that cross street and then you can see I, I want to say it's like 75 feet x mile you got to put a triangle in there and if you see it it's good it's not the best case scenario but it happens a lot Yeah, we're going on a second year now. It's already starting to slump back in. Yeah. We, that they didn't do correctly no, not at all. Um, actually, 235, the bumps, the all that stuff, it's concrete base. It's gone. Um, I have the resurfacing scheduled in 2023 for all of 235 and 571. The downside is the city. Well, the good side, the, uh, the city of New Carolina pays 20% of that resurfacing. ODOT covers the rest through, rest through state funds. Um, if I want to get rid of that concrete, which has been there, I think, since the 50s, um, that is solely on New Carlisle to remove. I might be able to get a little funding, but we're in the millions from the last estimate I got years ago to get that base out and put a new crushed limestone base, and that would take care of all that. So, no, we're going we're gonna to cut that area out and then just pour it up with concrete. Yep. 
we try to put money back, but typically our water lines have been um, not the issue. It's the laterals, the, the, the private lines like the galvanized and stuff like that. That's our main issue. But um, I mean, we have main breaks, but it is the main crossways for the service lines that are our big issue. Um, but we are put, trying to put some money back to do that. It just, when you start replacing utilities, um, like Tip City, they don't have any concrete base under their road, so there are costs for some of that, and they only did a little, a couple blocks right there. <coughs> yeah, just the, they just did 571 between the, uh, right before the railroad tracks and down there with only utility replacement. The rest was just some asphalt and concrete work. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Any questions, comments? Change was to make just just on the sign what Mr. Cobb stated. Can you read it one more time? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it will say New Carlisle City Hall provided by the citizens by ordinance. I guess I understand. I understand the, the desire to make the citizens for paying for that building. Nobody's sitting in the audience voted to buy that building. I like the idea of recognizing council who voted to find the building, thanking the citizens, but I don't think anybody in the chairs here voted. So I mean I understand I understand we're getting that, but I think we're going up. Just just a comment. Thank you, sir. And then two, because the motion is now I want to have the ordinance in front of you guys to pay for it, the renovations. Your sign says they already did, so thank you so much for selling for buying off the renovation before you sell the price tag. Appreciate that. Joe, I don't think anyone got it. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Linda Eggleston Nowakowski. I think that by putting on there provided by the citizens, the citizens provided the council and the leadership as well as the money. And that acknowledges the power of the citizens of the city as opposed to the power of the council. Council has no power without the power of the citizens. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Amy Hopkins. I live at 711 Spinning Road. And I'm just curious why, since all the buildings were marked the same, now all of a sudden it's a big deal about how the New Carlisle City Council building is marked. There's never been a problem with recognizing the citizens in the past, but it's a nice way to make recognize the council that made it happen. I know that they can't make it happen without the citizens. But we voted this council in, and they're the ones that have made the changes and have provided, helped us get this building and save all this money from renting the other one. So I think there's no problem and shouldn't be a problem with having the plaque the same as all the other plaques are in the city buildings. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else questions or comments before we move on? Yes, please. <clears throat> Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice. I just had a question if it was ever approved uh, for the recreation board to, so they can spend money. It was supposed to be done about three weeks ago and nothing ever happened. I just didn't know whether that ever actually approved. Do they have the, the power to do tonight, that now? Pardon? It's on the agenda tonight for the first read. When? Tonight. tonight. Oh, tonight? It's on the okay. Tonight. And when will we get our next council person? As long as everything goes as planned, it should be Wednesday. When? Wednesday, day Wednesday. after tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, thank you. Moving on. Ms. Burner. Okay. 
Um, let's see here. Resolutions. We have none tonight. Ordinances. We have five intro, two with action. Our first one is ordinance 19-11, public hearing and action tonight. And ordinance authorizing the city manager to proceed with an annexation petition to the board of Clark County Commissioners pertaining to 21.43 acres. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cook. I'll make a motion that we pass ordinance 19 11. Second. Mr. Bridge. It's an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, I've been asked to ask as an agent for a potential annexation for the city. Uh, and this ordinance authorizes me to do that. Mr. Lindsay. Will you be compensated for your time for acting as their agent? I do it on behalf of the city. Okay. It's very common for that to happen. Council, any other questions? Ms. Burner, are you ready? Okay. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. Moving on to Ordinance 19 12. Introduction tonight public hearing and action on 7 1 19 and ordinance amending chapter 208 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio regarding public meetings. Ordinance 19-13, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 7119. And ordinance amending part two, title eight of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio regarding boards and commissions. Ordinance 19-14E, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance to authorize the city manager to enter into a contract with Peterson Construction Company for the purpose of proceeding with the wastewater treatment plant influent building upgrade project. That has action Emergency tonight. Emergency measures. That has action tonight. We're voting on that one tonight. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Council? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we pass. Okay. And an explanation of this ordinance. Um, this has to do with a white wastewater improvement, uh, wastewater treatment plant improvement project we have going on for our fluent pump and bar screen. I will defer it to our service director, Mr. Kitko. It is his project. Uh, so if any in-depth questions uh, should be directed towards him. If those questions, then you guys can continue on with the boot. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Uh, this ordinance says we've been proceeding through. Uh, this would authorize the contract to, or for the city to award this contract to Peterson, and then we can start proceeding with um, submittals and, and um, getting them on board with all the documents that I got to do to get the project actually going. Um, and then the bid come in at uh, 439,000. Um, I can't remember the specific, but we're at around 439700 and we are estimating about $500,000 towards, or not to exceed 500000 just in case we run into any kind of change orders. But again, this is just to award the contract um, for the company to go ahead and do the work for us. I can entertain any questions on it or about the project itself. Yeah, Mr. K. Was, can you go over, if you don't mind, I, I want to make sure, does this also include this project, the uh, compactor as well? Compactor. It's part of the bar screen, right? Yes. For the trash, for the trash that comes through. Yeah, this is the second pump. You guys had the emergency to have the initial pump put in. That's that. The second pump and the bar screen with the auger compactor, and it takes it out to the dumpster. That is part of this project. Yes. How much trash comes through that that needs to be removed daily or weekly? However, would be the best way to describe it. Um, we're down in the pit, probably close to ten times a day, hand raking on a bar screen, and we're pulling. Uh, five multiple five gallon buckets of just wet wipes all kinds of products that people put down the down the toilet it's a, it's a lot um, I know we used to crane up a 50 
what do you call it? No, a 35 gallon um, can. It could be some weeks more, some weeks less per day. Just depends on what people put down the toilet. But there's no, uh, I mean, it's an absolutely need. It's not something new. Actually, it's required piece of equipment in our system. We're required to have this bar screen. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Biggest question I have on this uh, ordinance, where's the 500 grand coming from? $250,000 is coming from the wastewater fund, capital improvement fund and cash. <clears throat> the second portion that we are estimating the 250,000, uh, there is an ordinance on for introduction to seek financing through um, a low interest loan to get the rest of it. And then um, go from there, we're looking at kind of anywhere from two to three, four year term for that. Mr. Cook. I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. What happens if we don't make these improvements? Oh, we, we will have it in violation. I'm not afraid to say that we would be in violation. So it's, these two pieces were already in service. They went down, and we've already been in contact with the EPA that we were replacing them. And like I said, they are required because they were part of the initial plant. NPDD, NPDES discharge permit when the plant came online in 1980-something. So technically, mm -hmm. we could be in violation and could be subject to fines. Yes, without taking action. <laughs> so you either pay the piper or you do otherwise. Yes, sir. Good, Mr. Cook? Yeah. Does, does council remember the multiple uh, the discussions we've had on this project? Is everyone on the same page with this project? Some of us are. Okay. Any questions that we can, we've d discussed it, so I just wanted to make sure everyone knew it. We, it was the same project we had discussed prior. I want to go back, Mr. Kiko, if you don't mind. So every piece of equipment that we're looking to add is required, every single piece and phase that you're adding. Yes, it was already there. We are replacing it. Okay. Council, any other questions? When you're ready. Ready. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. Mr. Lowry. Mayor Lowry, I'm sorry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Motion passes four no, to two. It, 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 you need, how many? This is a project we need for the EPA requirements. Can I ask Vice Mayor Lindsay and Councilman Shammy through multiple discussions that we've had on this that now you're voting no and potentially putting our wastewater department in EPA violations? We've had multiple discussions on the project and how we're going to pay for it in the past, which is why it's in form of emergency ordinance. Because we, this is the, really going to be affecting the health and welfare of your citizens. So I'm just trying to find an answer through us having multiple discussions on it, multiple um, discussions about this project and exactly what's in front of you, why now the vote's being no. Because this is going to be a big deal for the EPA if we do not get this project done. Is this on a time crunch where it has to be an emergency ordinance? We have to do this so we can uh, do the next part, which is the financing. Um, to me, emergency ordinance or not should have no implication on how you're voting. It's either you vote yes now or you vote, I mean, you vote day to day, no as emergency ordinance, or you're voting yes as a non-emergency ordinance. But the reason it is an emergency ordinance because it's directly affecting the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens. Now, to reiterate, the reason is an emergency ordinance because we've had multiple discussions on this project with this council. Everyone was on the same page then. Sure, go ahead. May I add that, that the other pump is on its last leg that we are working. Try not to use that new pump. We have had to have a pump on site as a reserve pump at $5,000 a month. Not even using it. That is a requirement to rent it. And it goes up to sixty-five dollars to $7,000 if we have to put it in service. So I was able to at least send that back with this current pump in. If this other one, because 
it could go out tomorrow, but if we don't take action to actually start saying we're going to get this one that is not working, we're pulling another pump back up from Cincinnati for another 5000 We spent $25,000 this year just because we can't move fast enough with this. I don't want to spend another twenty five, thirty thousand 30000 just because a pump has to sit there. Is this going to replace the pump that is the older one now? Yes. And it's going to replace the bar screen? And it, is that the thing that comes up? Or Yes. The one we went and walked through did the council tours. Know. Yeah, and there's another thing there. That yeah, yeah, it's all ripped out already. We already got it out. So you're doing this all by hand now? Yeah, it's, when you guys were down there, we were already doing it by hand. Oh. The, the problem I have is financing. Do we have any room anywhere else to pull that money from? I don't, I don't, I don't want to remember. We're doing so good, not financing. Hold him up. I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of financing, but I think we're at 3% on this. Uh, I think we're thirteen to $17,000. I'm, I'm not sure on some of the quotes I'm getting. Thirteen or $17,000 in financing over, I think it was like three years. Uh, don't quote me on it, but it was something like that. It's not zero, but we need to do something for that short term. These aren't like the old school where we go do 20-year loans like the water plant, 30-year loans like other uh, facilities we've had to do. We're talking two to three, four maybe years. Okay. We've never went over five on any of our current equipment that we've been working on. If, Mr. Mayor, if, if we could get that to a two-year note. I'm sorry? Do you think we could get that to a two-year note? Because one thing I don't want to do is put the city back into further debt than it already is. I understand we have to do this. The debt is only the, in the wastewater department. It's not citywide. And the reason it's a three. So the, the wastewater the department has the two hundred fifty thousand right now. I'm sorry. The wastewater department has two hundred fifty thousand right now to spend on this project. Yes. Yeah, that's that where we had our. Yes. And in the next ordinance, I noticed that uh, there's like six, almost a little over sixty thousand dollars as a cushion. What is that? I know we're talking two different ordinances. What's that extra sixty grand going to be for? The bid come in at four thirty nine seven. We hope that between myself, the engineer, and the contractor, we fully understand the project. But if we get into that project, as anybody well knows, with water, wastewater, street construction, bridge construction, there is a possibility of change orders. And if we do not leave a, any money for change orders, I don't want. I don't like them at all, and that's why I'm real uh, diligent on inspections. But there has come time when I've had to have change orders. It's not my fault. It's not the engineer's fault. It could have been subgrade that we no one saw coming. So we just have to cover that. And if we have no change orders, we won't need the 60. We won't need the full 250. Our goal is to not use the whole 250. But I got to ask for some cushion. Okay. Thank you for your ex explanations, Mr. Mayor. I, I will change my vote from no to yes. Mr. Mayor, thank you. I do as well. Okay, so now it passes. Six to zero. Mr. Cobb, good. Thank you, Mr. Kiko, for your explanations. No, thank you. Ms. Burner, when you're ready, to continue, please. Ordinance 19-15, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 7119. <coughs> ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a financing agreement and any other required documents for the unappropriated project amount necessary for the payment of the wastewater influent building upgrade project and equipment. Ordinance 19-16, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 7119. And ordinance amending chapter 881 of the New Carlisle Codified Ordinances to levy and continue an existing one half of 1% tax on income, the continuation of which will become effective for a term commencing July 1st, 2020, and continuing for a period of five years thereafter. Okay. Other business, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. The Crime Watch meeting will take place Wednesday, July 10th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. 2019 Community Garage Sale will take place on June 22nd and June 23rd. 
A big boom thank you to will be held June 29th, the rain out date of June 30th at the Haddock's Ball Field at S. Um, there will be music, food, and fireworks. Um, executive session, there is none tonight. Thank you very much. Mr. Cook, did you have your hand up? Mr. Cobb. Or Mr. Cobb, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why does everyone do that to you? Or is it just me and him? Just you and him. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the fireworks, we definitely could use the help. There's only two old farts out here doing this. <laughs> and I'd like to see the fireworks this year. I didn't oh. get to see them last year. I got carted out of there. Mm -hmm. But yes, they, they would be a good fireworks show, but we definitely could use some help. I love seeing him run when he's smoking a cigarette. I sure did. <laughs> Across that ball field. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Thank you. Um, real quick, I just want to say a couple things. I wanted to thank you to the folks that put on the uh, farm. What? Chief, you got something? Uh, one thing I didn't, it hadn't been brought up, and I just got notified about it today. Uh, the Parks and Recreation for the county will be doing their annual phone frenzy for the kids on uh, June 28th here at the, truck, uh, at the park. Uh, starts at 4.30. Quit hiding, Mike. Yes, you're running the edge. Um, but, uh, they've done it. This will be the third year in a row that they've done it. It's a super turnout for the kids. Uh, super neat thing for the kids to be able to do. The kids really enjoyed it. It's kind of neat. The half of the park is covered in foam. So, uh, but it's, it's a pretty neat deal. But it's the 28th of June at 4.30. Thank you very much. I know it's a popular event. It's uh, pretty entertaining to see if you've never seen it. Like Mr. Shannon yeah, apparently has to speak before. That's great. Thanks. Also, I just want to uh, send out a big thank you to the folks that put on the farmer's market this past weekend. was the first one. And luckily, for the most part, the weather held out. It was a, it was a good turnout, good food, uh, a lot of nice things for sale down there. So a big thank you to them. And also, I just passed this letter around the council. They've just seen it. And I let you see it just a few minutes ago. Um, it's a letter to uh, really to the city um, commending um, Greg Slattery that works down at the cemetery. Just basically her interactions with Greg and his professionalism in dealing with him, um, being very responsive to her uh, concerns and questions about looking for spaces and things of that nature, and, and to the whole cemetery crew uh, as far as keeping it um, very nice and, and looks clean and professional. So just a big thanks to the cemetery crew and everyone that helps keep that ship ship. That is all I have. Anybody else on council have anything to say tonight? Mr. Bridge? No? Chief Peace. Anyone? Final thoughts? Community cleanup? 29th. 29th. 8 to 11. Yes. And I will be there in shorts and a hat helping you dispose of yourself. <laughs> And one more other, one more thing. I'm getting the nod to uh, not to forget uh, Friday at uh, 9:30 at the pool. This this uh, coming Friday, starting 9:30 p.m., will be the pool's first uh, for the season dive-in, not drive-in, dive-in movie night. We'll be playing uh, Finding Nemo on a 12-foot screen at the pool. So bring your your floaties and float in the pool and, and watch a movie on a big screen with the kids. It'll be a good time. Uh, the movie will start at 9:30. So the pool won't actually close at eight; it'll just stay open for the evening. And what's the date again? Uh, this Friday, which is the twenty-first, I believe. Yep, the first day of summer. No rain. All sun. No just rain. All sun. All sun. <laughs> so, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lindsay, you have one thing. I just, when you said you got the nod, I looked to see who gave you the nod, <laughs> and I realized that Miss uh, April Irie was sitting in the audience. Uh, she wasn't here the last time that we was talking about the pool. The pool came up. So Miss Lowry, Mrs. Lowry, uh, I said it, and you've probably seen it on the video, but I told people in the audience that you've done an awesome job, awesome job in turning the pool around. However, I'm not impressed with the numbers so far. You've been open a week. There's 17 grand in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I assume you're going to attempt to turn that around at some point. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will with the programs you have going on, things that you brought in, uh, the swim team and other teams I believe is coming and meeting here to do their practices and stuff. Pardon me, ma'am? I didn't hear you. First home swimming is Wednesday at 6 p.m. Awesome. Did the public have to pay to get into that, or? There is a spectator fee. Uh, how much? Three dollars. Three dollars, okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. I just wanted to personally tell you that uh, this guy here won't brag on the pool or anything, but like we had a conversation, I understand why, so I told him I would take that up, and then I realized you wasn't even here when I said it. I told, told him later, I said, well, that was a waste of energy. <laughs> Well, I understand, I understand, but you are the manager, so, you know, if things go wrong, who's getting the blame? <laughs> so when things go, when things go correct and right, you should get the, uh, you should get the congratulations and the, uh, and the kudos for it. And I think you've done an awesome job. Yeah. You took a pool that was losing $45,000 at the, the year before you took it over, I believe, and you turned it around very quickly and made a profit. I think the first year you only lost I think, well, I think five. three to 5,000, something like that. But a $40,000 plus from the minus side is awesome. And I think you've been in the, or in the positive ever since then. Although you got your work cut out for you this year, because like I said, one week or 17 grand a whole. <laughs> Deb? In her defense, we've spent $27,000 in capital improvements for the pool this year. So that's why it's showing the right. 17. <laughs> Um, so, yes, yes. So we're up, and, yes. And, and I did know that, and I'm sure the people out here knew that too because we had a lot of discussion on that. And, uh, well, that's what I was going to say, Deb, just to correct me if I'm wrong. Once we roll the capital improvement into it, which is what we all agreed to. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. So if, if you were to roll in now, she's 12000 ahead. Yes. So, which is great. So, hey, ma'am. Oh. Yeah, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then you're having the interviews after that? Correct. The, the architect meeting is at 6, and then the, the, the special meeting will be at 7, starting at 7. All that special meeting. And then after the interviews, is it going to be an open meeting for everybody, or what's it going to be when you vote? We'll do interviews, and then, yeah, that meeting, the special meeting will be open to the public. People can come in, and then council will say their piece, and maybe uh, a few or the, the three candidates would like to get up just, you know, if there's some public here, maybe introduce your guys selves and then council will make their decision in a public forum. Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Yep, right here. What time will you go? I'm just talking. No, no, it's, no, it's. Oh. Wait, did you say are there interview times open? The interviews will be open. They, unfortunately, they will be. They will be. The way I've never done that before. I know the way the way the way the uh, the way the motion was made to put that um, legal ad out. It stayed special meeting at seven o'clock to do appoint or not appointments, but interviews and appointment of new council members. So therefore, it locks it into an. <coughs> Now, we would be here for the open. I mean, for the vote. Correct. I mean, personally, what I'm hoping is, is hopefully, maybe, I mean, we can't force anybody to do this. Maybe they'll sit outside while we do it, but that's up to them. Yeah. So, we've always had closed interviews before, right. so the wording needs to be looked at for the next time around. Hopefully that's, you know, like years from now. Yes. So, anything else? Council, administration, one more. Did, did the Parks and Recreation Board actually get No, this is just the first reading tonight. It'll be at the next meeting. But it's here, so it'll be at the next meeting no matter what, yes or no. Well, one more, or two more, okay. technically. Well, when you're amending, when you amend your code, right. it has to require two reads. Before the city would pass by, huh? <laughs> you should tell me so you don't get my hopes up. I did at the last meeting. I said we're going to redo it because that's be done by ordinance, not resolution. 
you're amending your code. So if they did it by resolution last time, it, it's not valid. We're actually changing and adding it into our codified ordinance. It does not just be a separate piece of paper. So we're actually doing it legit. That's what's taken to, to, to read. All right. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move to adjourn.